Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Tuesday, November the 20th, 2018. Let's talk about an intriguing fight at light heavy. Dimitri Bivol versus Jean Pascal. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say this. One of the things that has helped me figure out the sport of boxing is keeping track of older fighters who've seen a lot. Talk about other fighters in their division or other fighters who they might fight in the future. So, the longest reigning light heavyweight champion, a vet who has seen a lot, is Adonis Stevenson. If you track Stevenson, you realize he is one of the best interviews in boxing, right? Doesn't talk a lot, but when he talks, it's thick, right? Now today, on BoxingScene.com, they have a brief interview with Stevenson where he talks about Dimitri Bivol, one of the other champs at 175 pounds. And he says... It's true, he's fast with his hands. It will be dangerous if you stay in front of him and you stay within his reach. But Stevenson continues, he says, on the other hand, if you make regular lateral movements, his speed will decrease. You do not have to stay in front of him. And I'm pretty sure Jean knows about this reality. Right? So, Stevenson is picking Pascal in the Bivol fight. Let me offer a different point of view. I think Bivol is about to start a reign at light heavyweight. Right? He's been the champ since 2017. I'm expecting him to start a reign. Right, folks? It's a style thing. First off, the guy is 27. He's just entering his prime 27 years old as an amateur his record was something like 268 wins and 15 losses if you look at his record he's beaten some very difficult opponents Ike Chalemba Sullivan Barrera what I want people to do is to look at the highlights on the Barrera fight. They're in my favorites folder. You're going to see a guy who has the heart of a combination puncher. Now understand, that's rare in boxing today, right? Adonis Stevenson, by contrast, is kind of like a Manny Pacquiao, a Deontay Wilder, right? He'll jump around, not that Wilder jumps around, but he'll jump around trying to set up a straight left hand. Now, combination punchers, they're different, right? They just are. Ray Leonard was a combination puncher. They come in and they think, hey, I have the hand speed on this guy. I have the hand speed. If I pick the right time to come in the pocket, and we start trading, I'm going to land more blows than this guy. Right now, what you'll notice with great combination punchers is when the bullets start flying, when the guys are trading punches, a guy who's a pot shotter is going to panic. In other words, if I'm there and I'm just trying to land a straight left, and oops, that straight left didn't land. What's my next move? It's going to be to get out of Dodge. I'm not going to want to hang out there for a trade of six, seven, eight punches, right? The kitchen's going to get too hot. They don't want to stick around, pot shotters, right? Combination punchers are different. Combination punchers want the bullets to start flying. Right? They want to trade with you. Their big punch might not be the first or second punch of the combination. It might be the third or fourth punch. Now, we've seen Sullivan Barrera fight a lot of tough opponents. In the highlights here, when you look at him against Bivol, 
you're going to notice Bivol throwing brutal hooks with both hands. He has power with both hands. The hand speed is going to fly off the computer screen. Right? The guy has quick hands. If you track his history, he used to weigh less. This is a guy getting older, gaining weight. He has very quick hands. More importantly, he has that Tom Brady, we'll call it, uh, Drew Brees mindset, right? Where the other team is blitzing. Some quarterbacks, rookie quarterbacks, have to throw the ball away, right? Oh, no, it's a linebacker. Let me throw the ball away. I can't take chances, right? You blitz a Tom Brady. You blitz a Drew Brees, a guy who wants the bullets to start flying. And these guys will think to themselves, wow, they're blitzing. That means somebody is open. Receiver number one, covered. Receiver number two, covered. Tight end, covered. Here's my safety valve. Here's Alvin Kamara. Right? Here's, here's Deion Lewis. Here's Rob Gronkowski. Right? Bivol wants to raise room temperature. Bivol wants volume. Right? Bivol himself is an athlete. Now, Jean Pascal, at his age, in my opinion, and I know Stevenson is picking Pascal in this fight, right? Understand that might be a Canadian thing. Right? That might, you know, you see fighters, they want to support the hometown fighter. Right? Don't they? You know, they, they view boxing as a nationalistic type thing. So, Adonis Stevenson, who dodged Jean Pascal for years, right? Pascal wanted the fight. I believe it was Stevenson who didn't want the fight. But Adonis Stevenson, who dodged Pascal, praises Pascal. As long as Pascal fights other people, right? That's what's going on. So, these guys are both from Canada. Both guys had great moments at light heavyweight. Adonis Stevenson, praising Pascal, says, yes, I think he's going to beat Bivol. I think he knows what it takes to beat Bivol, right? Let's strip the politics out. If Pascal and Stevenson weren't from the same country, I'm not sure if Stevenson, who's a straight shooter, would pick Pascal in this fight. I don't see how Pascal, who's a pretty good athlete, but who's past his prime, who looked lethargic against Kovalev, who got stopped, who had Freddie Roach in his corner, and even Freddie Roach fell that Pascal's game wasn't quite the same. I just don't know how Jean Pascal will be able to match Bivol. Right? Bivol's hands are just too fast. Bivol is the kind of guy who could deal with a shootout. Right? Some guys run away from shootouts. Other guys run to shootouts. They're looking to trade punches. And just look at the end of the Barrera fight. Barrera gets caught with a hook. He goes down. When he gets up, Harvey Dock, excellent referee, looks at him and <laughs> realizes it's not happening tonight. Right? The great combination punchers are also knockout punchers. Right? Look at Bivol's knockout record. He's not hitting you with pity pat punches. He's actually sitting down on the shots. Right now, we're in an era, and part of it has to do with the great guys from the last era. We're in an era where guys are much more cautious than this. Right? It's the post Floyd Mayweather era. Floyd Mayweather was a pot shotter, not high volume. He wanted to land the clean shot, block your shot. He was defense first. Bivol is offense first. 
right? It's a difference. Let me also say, too, you heard Stevenson talk about how with Bivol, lateral movement can slow him down, right? What I want you to do is to look at how Bivol pivots in the highlights of the Sullivan Barrera fight. Hell, you can find the full fight here online. Look at how Bivol in the pocket quickly pivots. In other words, don't assume that Bivol is Sonny Liston, you know, standing there and, you know, doesn't really move that well. No, this guy's an athlete, decorated amateur, sweet spot of his career, 27. So I'm taking Bivol over Jean Pascal. I would not be surprised if Pascal, who's been stopped before, who's been overwhelmed before, doesn't get overwhelmed by Bivol, right? Don't be surprised if Pascal gets stopped. Now understand, there are a lot of people at light heavyweight, I suspect there might be some guys from 168 who are getting older who might need to fight at 175. James DeGale comes to mind, right? Um, guys like Callum Smith, young guy, tall, 6'3", He's weighing 168 for now. Sooner or later, he's going to have to jump to 175, right? Just think about the 6'3 guys you know who weigh 168. I'm guessing they're not a lot of them, right? As you look at the future, right, at 175, as you think about the Alvarez-Kovalev rematch, as you think about Badu Jack calling out everyone in the division, Keep an eye on Bivol. I get the feeling this is the start of something big. I think he beats Pascal. I'm guessing Stevenson, who didn't want to fight Pascal, ain't going to fight this guy. Forget the interviews. Right? The key is, I don't see Stevenson calling out Bivol, even though it would be a unification match. I'm just here to tell you that Badu Jack is too slow. One man's opinion, he's too slow for Bivol, right? I don't think any of the guys at 175 pounds will be able to maintain the pace with this guy. Understand, you can be in your 20s, right? To be Bivol, you've got to be able to throw a high volume of punches, right? A lot of guys just aren't built that way. They need to pace themselves. Good luck doing that against a slugger who lets both hands go, has power in both hands, who can throw high volume, who's accurate, and who knows how to pivot in the pocket, and who isn't a flash in the pan. Right? He's already beaten Cedric Agnew, Ike Chalemba. <laughs> he already has a title. He already has an amateur title. Right? He He's already had over 250 amateur fights. Right? Keep an eye on this fight. It's very important. Remember the name. Dimitri Bivol. I think he takes out Jean Pascal. The way I'd play it is to take Bivol to win... I'll hedge to play a little bit with Bivol by KO. Just to understand the flip side of combination punchers like this. Guys jumping in the pocket with both hands, throwing a lot of punches, throwing power punches, right? Leaning on their front foot, right? A good counter puncher. A good counter puncher might find that their offensive opponent isn't paying enough attention to defense and might plan something for a hyper-aggressive counterpuncher. I don't think Jean Pascal will be able to pull it off. I'm expecting Bivol to beat him decisively. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me say this about Adonis Stevenson, too. Right? Stevenson just fought Badu Jack. Looked good early. Looked good 
early. He looked 41 to me the second half of the fight. Right? He faded badly. Father Time ultimately is going to beat all of us. Right? Peter Thiel notwithstanding. Right? So, all I'm saying is this. There's an opening. There's an opening at 175. And one of the guys already holding a belt might be in the perfect position for it. Let me say this too. Callum Smith. Let's just think it through for a bit. Callum Smith is a big guy, right? Huge. Heavy puncher, aggressive himself. Hooker. Right? Hooker. What happens if he fights a guy like this? Who's going to be pivoting in the pocket, daring Callum Smith to open up? Right? That's one of those great fights, let's hope the people at the zone are thinking about. Right? Bivol, high action, very entertaining. I have the utmost respect for Donna Stevenson. But I'm not sure if you can just decide, let me make regular lateral movements against Bivol and avoid him. Good luck with that. Could you imagine being in the ring with Ray Leonard and you say, okay, his hands are fast, but let me just make regular lateral movements and I'll be safe. <laughs> Easier said than done. I like Bivol in this fight. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.